at first I didn't sleep. We just tried to monitor everything from the Philippines and and we are really expecting not really that everyone will be uh, convicted but when the news broke out this morning early morning and we are six hours late in the Philippines when we received the news uh, we were really happy at first we were really happy because finally 50 55 people are convicted uh, facing 57 counts of murder and but suddenly when we look at the the resolutions of the case uh, we're somewhat a little bit you know shocked because out of that there is still one that is not included in the case the case of uh, Reynaldo Momai uh, one of the photojournalists there he was not included in the case because there was nobody to to, to for for the for the conviction and second the ampat ones are given like 15 days to make an appeal so it's kind of not not the end of everything it's not the end of what you call justice it is an ongoing case and we still have to work harder because we know that there's some you know miracles there's some you know uh, things that will happen within the 15 days period after the promulgation made this morning. Actually, it's emotionally, yeah, I am. It, I'm, I'm far from them. Uh, we've been working this out for like 10 years. We had series of campaigns every, every like it's not like every year. We tried to make it like every month. We have this uh, commemoration. It's difficult, like monthly observation of what had happened ten years ago, and 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 suddenly we had this kind of conviction. Although I'm also happy because most of the most of the widows and orphans, we have this particular chat group. Uh, where we share everything, where we share our plans, and they also shared our their their fears, earlier fears. But when when this decision came out, we had like, oh, we had, we need to celebrate. But I I told them I'll be at a distance, and and if you need something, I can always. Uh, say a word or two, or give a statement for you, and, and I would like, I really would wanted to be with them, especially that last November 23, and I just feel sad that not everyone really look at it as a situation that we need to, to see how the press freedom situation in the Philippines, but uh, this kind of promulgation has even reached worldwide because when I opened the TV, everyone was already with this kind of news. But uh, it's different when you are there together with them because you get to get the warm embrace of the family. The children, you used to see them small and now they are professionals. And, and I know that they are also happy, but I keep telling them this is not yet over. We still have some work to do after this. So anyway, I have 10 more days and I can still see them and visit them anytime when I get back to the Philippines. Just recently, my friend was killed. His name is Benji Caballero. He's a station manager in Maguindanao, just few meters few kilometers away from where the massacre site in Ampatuan and he also covered and he was together with me with together with the National Union of Journalists of the Philippines who were uh, in, in advocacy and stop killing the journalists he was among them who joined us but unfortunately he was shot and he was shot last this uh, October 30 and he died last December 1 and until, I mean, the family prefers silence over the case. So meaning, even, even, even with this uh, conviction, there is no assurance that the journalists in the Philippines, like more than a hundred other cases, are still not 
uh, resolve until now, and there was no decision unlike this one with the with the Ampatuan. So anyone can just be killed, or anyone can just be shot, and and you don't know when the justice will be for these people. We st remember, there are just 32 or 33 journalists killed, and we still have like 150 more journalists killed since 1986. So press freedom is really, like Philippines is not really the safest place in Asia for, for journalists. I started with this digital safety training here, and, and it is sponsored by the RSF. This is one good help for, for journalists like me and going back. And I can always re-echo this kind of program to my colleagues. And basically, hopefully the RSF will sustain, will continue supporting me in, in conducting this training when I go back to the Philippines. And, and second is that hopefully the RSF will also be you know, when we have uh, local campaigns on press freedom, I also expect the RSF to, to magnify it internationally or even in the Europe region or whatever, so that uh, everyone will know what's really happening on the ground. Although everyone is looking at it, but like, for example, now the Trump issue, the Trump impeachment has already covered the issue on the promulgation. So, so we have to sustain like a continuing communication and information about the press freedom situation in different countries and continents.